got into the Voron challenge. This build is like a masterclass in engineering or a boot camp in engineering. And just as an example, you have two options of wires that you can choose from. Usually most kits come with the silicone shielded wires, but also you can have the more expensive version, the PTFE shielded wires. Those are the only options that work well in the drag chain so they don't break from use. Wiring this 3D printer and organizing the electronics compartment requires quite a bit of patience and measurements. It's either you can run the wires directly into each component in the electronics compartment or you can get a little fancy and get an uh, electronics wiring block and you can wire everything in the electronics compartment into the block and then from the block to whatever parts you have. The kit doesn't come with the wiring block so you can get the wiring block and there's many options and I opted for the ones with the ferrule. You just have to attach the ferrule at the end of the wires so you will need the crimper anyway for ferrule and then you need the engineer crimper and then you would need the other crimper and the other crimper and maybe a wire stripper or you can use the shears that come with 3d printers that you can uh, cut off filament other challenges that you can find in the wires it's running them properly through the drag chains and at the back of the gantry running it underneath and then into the z chain rather than improvising and uh, if you have the patience and it is a patience challenge this build like it took me about two months and i still haven't ironed out all the problems i'm still having but uh, if you have the patience you don't have to rewire it or redo some of the work don't just read the pdf manual also read the words in that manual not just look at the schematics and then also look at vorondesign.com for guidance and help there's also the 3d printer in the fusion 360 you can look at each component and see how they fit and then you have the stl files for the 3d printer to 3d print word of advice there's good kits and average kits so magic phoenix sells good kits mine was from 3d printers bay which is formbot which is also the maker of vividino true done which seems to be inspired from the voron i'm only familiar with the 2.4 i'm not familiar with the other vorons previous to that and there's also very many forks of the vorons already the voron 01 which i heard that is very hard to build and annoying but there's also a voron 2.4 the size of zero one the problem with that is still twelve thirteen hundred dollars even though it's like tiny you still have to shell the money out i opted for the metal parts you have the kit and then you have to buy the 3d printer parts or the metal parts which kind of tighten everything together because you the kit that you buy is just the fabricated parts so i opted for the metal parts which make the 3d printer heavier but it also makes the tool head heavier but also the metal draws out the heat of the extruder stepper motor so it's kind of a compromise but if you want speed and you don't need cooling then go for the plastic parts because it's lighter however i think a hybrid of the metal parts which make the 3d printer heavy which absorbs absorbs vibration it's a good combo the parts are expensive they're about 300 dollars if you can 3d print them in petg if you don't have abs capabilities yet then you can print them in petg and then you can reprint them in abs once you build the warrant because all the kits come with the panels and actually finalizing the 3d printer it's a challenge in itself because mine is still not finalized once you're ready to apply for the serial number and you get the serial number you can be proud of yourself there you got yourself a voron approved 3d printer that has a serial number problems problems with the voron cooling is one of them that i'm running into constantly if you want to just 3d print big things or ornamental things that don't require precise fitting then you're fine if you want to print this handsome little fella then you can and especially if you have the 350 which is quite large i think you can orient the handsome little fella i didn't 3d print that in the voron i 3d printed it in a creality s5 one other problem is bed adhesion the bed adhesion is because of the spring steel sheet and it has like the rough face and the smooth face on the smooth face i still have problems i scraped it up with the sandpaper but still it's not all there the adhesion and then an ongoing problem that i'm not sure if it's solved yet and i'm not sure if it's clipper or is a 
problem with the motherboard in the kit or the Raspberry Pi. It's thermal runaway protection. I got the kit with the E3D V6 hot end. I didn't go for the Dragon, which I kind of regret now. And I had a failure with the 3D print and the E3D V6 uh, sock got mangled away and Clipper is very sensitive with that temperature and it goes into runaway protection. So I switched into a Volcano heat block with the E3D V6 heat sink and for that I needed a shroud which I eventually found online but before that I mangled myself in blender a few shrouds and whatever modifications I did they were too close to the heat block and they always kind of melted away and deformed and the temperature problem I'm not sure if it's solved I'm not sure if it's the motherboard the Raspberry Pi which constantly shows insufficient under voltage I verified the power supply it's still going at 5.2 volts that one is still out there I can't fix it yet I changed the hot end from the Frankenstein version 1 volcano to a mosquito and I have not yet needed to 3d print something of long duration documentation obviously varndesign.com that's where you can decide if you want to source the parts yourself buy a kit and then buy the 3d printed parts or the metal parts and then you have the Voron discord channel which actually can ask questions and have people answer you in real time uh, there's also faked3d.org and teamfdm.com uh, you can find mods there one particular mod that uh, is very nice is the AB B-BN from Bad Noob. He's active on the Discord channel here and there. And that's a nice design because it changes the turbine from a 4020 turbine on the afterburner 2 head to a 50 15 which uh, moves more air and it improves your cooling last time i checked there's a bunch of people working on a new design to improve the cooling problem the afterburner works really well with the tpe i ran into problems with the bmg extruder clones the tpe constantly tangled inside the afterburner seems to do a good job i, I the tpe is still finicky it's very finicky i heard also that uh, the 175 it's even more finicky because it's thin maybe if you go with the two whatever millimeters is the other size up for filament that may improve your extrusion the most challenging i would say for this build is the belt tensioning on the z-axis these four belts with four motors and tensioning those belts is a challenge there's all kinds of tutorials out there in the build make sure that everything is square especially the gantry and the traveling of the gantry x-axis so the x-axis goes back and forth and that needs to travel true d-racking there's tutorials on d-racking the 3d printer i ran into a problem with the linear rails started grinding there was some i don't know metal burr in there you can take it apart make sure that the little metal balls don't come out don't lose them you can put them in with uh, one of those needle nose tweezers like the really sharp tweezers that's how you can put them back in there they are still held with this steel wire but they can always come undone you can uh, clean them up with uh, isopropyl alcohol and the recommendation is to clean them up before installing them i did not i only had to clean that one and it worked there's also the xy belt tensioning and the belt cutting i didn't cut the belts i cut the z belts but i never cut the x y belts because i found a way to tuck them in inside the tool head carriage the 3d printer is quite fast however it may work fantastically for a 0.4 nozzle which having a smaller nozzle improves with cooling because there's not a lot of mass to be cooled so you might get more accurate 3d prints but i don't like 0.4 nozzles because they take forever i had a 0.4 nozzle but now i only use like 0.8 nozzles to like finish the jobs real quickly but that deploys more mass of plastic and cooling is required especially for some of the things if you just want to 3d print a handsome little fella then it's a different story but if you want to 3d print especially threads mm, difficult gotchas the inductive probes are bad and these probes could uh, have you scratching your head sideways because this is a quad gantry leveling process and they're using uh, i remember in the school of this guy lagrange 
which was like some French mathematician. And I was like, why are they bothering me with all this crap? Well, apparently his whatever math is used to level the gantry four ways. And if the probe is bad, it will not get the accurate probes. And basically <laughs> you will spend days of trying to level the gantry when the probe is bad. And I think there's a worldwide batch of bad probes. So if you get to that, just buy the whatever probe you could find. Or I bought extra and all of those were bad and I went back to the one that came with the kit. There's a lot of stuff you have to do when installing the firmware, follow the documentation, there's documentation online, there's documentation in videos, there's documentation everywhere. Problems that I ran during the build. Okay, silly problems. On the afterburner tool head, the fan that you see inside for the part cooling, which is the top fan, you actually have to take the lid out to fit in the design. I was racking my brain on that one. <laughs> Slicing your 3D prints. Okay, this has been covered probably a million times. However, I just found out recently like hours ago that when a problem seems unsolvable because the layers of or the actual each line of filament that is deployed doesn't properly make contact with the neighbors around change the slicer so i switched from uh, cura to super slicer and uh, the problem was solved i still use cura for all of the other stuff because i'm so used to it super slicer is a clone of prusa slicer which is a clone of slicer and then there's the cute little 3d printers and then there's the enhanced rabbit carrot feeder and that's the ercf which is like the prusa mmu it's a multi-filament selector and you can 3d print in multiple filaments with the voron and super slicer so maybe that would be a point of getting used to super slicer that's on deep fried hero what can you use this 3d printer for i thought i'm going to use it for everything because i thought it's going to be fast reliable but little did i know it's not that reliable and i need to print stuff on the smooth portion of the pei sheet and not the rough portion and they don't stick as well that's one then the cooling is not there for 3d printing threads and then those threads they bind that's two problems and that requires either upgrade to a dragon hot end or a dragon hot end you also have the vulcan mod and the vocal mask it's a hybrid in between a mosquito heatsink and a volcano hot end and basically it works like a charm according to the community invented in sweden along with so many other shit that is invented in sweden and even walked on the moon anyway what else we have here other available hot ends there's the mosquito the dragons all kinds of dragons with wings and claws and <laughs> And then you have the Volcom mask and probably a few others that I'm not aware of. Community. There's an active community about the Voron and there's constantly new things developed for it. Like mods, things, that and the other. Get your serial number. <laughs>